What's going on guys? Welcome back to another DGF video and today we'll be taking a quick look at the ROG Z890 Media Kit which you probably saw from that little intro. So basically I've got the Z890 Hero, the new Ryzen 3 Extreme so it's a little bit different than the non-extreme. We have some Kingston Fury memory and then they also threw in some thermal paste as well. So we'll start with the board. Now recently we covered the AMD Hero so the aesthetics of the board are quite similar as the AMD side of things. We do get a few different areas that are, I would say interesting with the Q release for the M.2 heatsink over here. But before I go over that, I want to go over more of the aesthetics of the board. So this is a heavy little board. Now this is a standard ATX, I believe only the Extreme is going to be EATX uh, at the start. I'm not sure what's going to be else is going to be coming, but we have seen their current lineup that they are releasing. They got the Apex, the Hero, and the Extreme are going to be their top dogs. We haven't seen anything about a formula yet, but we have that nice backplate on the back, and then we can tell that's going to act as a bit of a heatsink as well. But very heavy, very meaty. We can see the VRM goes actually all the way around for the cooling. There's uh, modules down the bottom on the side and at the top, so it wraps all the way around and I can see there's a heat pipe that goes all the way through. Now, if you are familiar with my previous videos I did on some boards on the AMD side of things, I wanna go over some of the new ASUS uh, features. So basically they have the new M.2 Q release, Q slide, Q latch, and the new PCIe Q release. So the M.2 Q release, this one's a little bit different. This has like a lever that you push down like this Pretty cool, and now your heatsink just comes out like that. Now this is a big chunk of aluminum, I can only assume. Now that this is off, you can see we actually have no locking mechanism for the M.2. So this is where the Q slide comes into play. So basically you just put your SSD in there and then we just slide this along till it latches in, which is pretty cool. And that'll go all the way down to, I believe, 2230 M.2s and then all the way up to your longer ones as well. I don't think longer ones are that popular. 2280 is the standard ones for that. And then for the M.2Q latch, obviously we don't need it on that primary one because we have the Q slide. Now if we take this off, once again, and I said, when I said in the other videos, I really wish there was a cleaner way to take off these uh, bottom heatsink covers that ROG and ASUS do kind of maybe like a magnetic with a clip or something. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a total of six uh, M.2 slots on this board. So I do believe that there's actually three Gen 5 and there are three Gen 4, which is pretty good. Now there is going to be some lane sharing going on there. From what I can believe from the specs, the M.3 and M.4, when they're enabled, the, your primary Gen 5 slot will run at 8 by. So that's the only thing I can see that is shared at the moment, which isn't too bad. So you're not getting anything else disabled. You can run all your M.2 SSDs, just this slot will run at 8 instead of 16. You're going on to the Q latch, this one here. You just drop your SSD in and then it locks in. And then to take it out, it just pops up as well, which is pretty sweet. Now moving on to the Q uh, release. So we covered the Q release, the Q slide, the Q latch. So the first one was the M.2 Q release. It's quite confusing. Now the latest one is the PCIe Q release. So you got the M.2 Q release. This is the PCI Q release. Now funny, they've only done it on the top slot. They haven't done it on the bottom one. Uh, basically this ha is replacing the uh, PCIe Q release from before where you had the button up on the side. Now when your card goes in, it just locks in and then when you want to release it, when you sort of twist the card, the uh, spring-loaded latch here just naturally releases the card. So you don't have the button anymore, which uh, which I think is good because that button sometimes got in the way with things. Uh, sometimes running vertical cards or especially cards that had uh, beefier backplates on, we probably haven't going to get any cards that have water blocks on the back anymore but especially when you ran uh, water cooling loops where you had the water block on the backside for the memory, they will, would always get in the way of that uh, Q release at the top there. Power reset controls are up here. That's gonna be standard on most of the high-end 
ROG boards. I know I did get a lot of comments on my previous previous videos about boards that don't have that Q code. It's definitely on this one. As for your uh, more mid-tier models like the Strix and so on, I haven't seen those yet, so I can't confirm whether those are on, but I do agree. Um, I'm sure for the cost of this little Q code, it would be good to get them on more, especially mid-tier boards I can see. I can understand if it's like the real budget boards, we don't need it, but at least I would say starting at mid-tier, we should get that Q code. The new socket is LJ1851, so we've gone up from uh, 1700 to 1851 pins same cooler size so we don't have to worry about any compatibility issues there power delivery is 22 1 2 2 that's the same as the new apex i really do like that board and the extreme i believe at the moment is the only one with higher with 24 power phases now the memory system on this is I wouldn't say different but we have some new technology we've got up to 196 gig uh, memory supported who knows that that could change by a firmware update if new memory modules come out that's 4 by 48 and that's up to 8800 mega transfers now the interesting thing with this board or this chipset the z 90 if you were watching the Computex uh, content that was out we have a new type of technology when it comes to the UDIM area now these new Kingston Fury are CUDIM so basically that's the latest variant of UDIM and it incorporates a clock driver on each of the modules. So that's basically to improve the signal integrity and that chip is responsible for the clock signal and it's just going to regenerate that clock signal used by the memory chips to offer a higher operating frequency. So I believe the fastest is going to be about 9600 mega transfers. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes against normal UDIM modules compared to this CUDIM but I know that all of the brands are bringing out that CUDIM, G-Skill, Teen Group, uh, XBG, and this Kingston Fury kit. Now, I can't really talk too much about this uh, Kingston Fury kit because it's got a label on the back, but there is no information at all. If I put that model in, nothing comes up, so I don't know what speed this is. I don't know anything else, and unfortunately, I don't have a CPU yet to test any of this. Uh, I believe CPUs were going to make it into the kit. I believe that's like the Ultra uh, i9 or the 9 Ultra. Unfortunately, they didn't make it, so I was told that they will be being sent separately, so can't even see what the box looks like, so unfortunately, I cannot show you that. Now, once again, ROG have incorporated their Nitro Path DRAM tech, so once again, that improves signal integrity. Uh, that's got a shorter pin design. I mentioned that in the, my previous videos, and that is to help the uh, mega transfers about 400 megahertz increase. So before, if you were capping out at about 6,000 uh, 6, is pretty low, but say before you were capping out at, say, 7,600, this time you should be able to get about 8,000, which is pretty good. And that's gonna be on mainly the ROG uh, higher end boards. Moving down to the PCIe layout. So the first one is of course 16. That can drop down to eight if you're using all the M.2s. And that can also be uh, bifurcated to uh, 16 or it can be 844, which is quite, it's, which is pretty interesting, but I don't think anyone would do that unless you're running a different card in your primary slot that's not a GPU. Then we have the bottom ones. Now this one's quite, I would say a little bit confusing. This is a physical 16, but it is locked at four by. I can tell by there. And also I checked on the specs to make sure that's, that's locked at four by. So I don't think you can throw on a 16 by card and get that full power of the 16 by slot. And then we have a dedicated one by as well. Uh, interesting enough, once again, slim sass on this board. It's actually, I didn't see it at first because once you put the uh, heat sink back on now once again it's going to be hard to line this up there we go uh it's actually under this little uh cover of the aluminum heat sink you can just see it there so i actually do like that it's now nicely hidden out, out of the way now once again that isn't shared with anything at all so that is off on its own so you'll get the full uh functionality of that slim sass so that's a gen 4x4 and once again you don't just have to use them for say those uh fatter a two and a half inch SSDs, like the 15 terabytes, those ones. You can run uh, converter cables, you can convert them into another NVMe uh, slot. There's a lot of things you can convert that slot into. Uh, now we have the rear IO. So of course we have Thunderbolt, we have two Thunderbolt 4, so they're the USB type C. Let me spin this around a bit. Okay, so we have the two Thunderbolt USB C and we have five USB 10, so they're all your Type A. So we've got four Type A and then one Type C, 10 gigabit. And then we have four USB 5 gigabit, they're all your Type A. Now we have five gig LAN 
and also 2.5 gig LAN. Unfortunately, 10, you're probably gonna be looking at the extreme bulb for that. And once again, we have Wi-Fi 7, which is the faster 320 megahertz channel. I wouldn't say faster, it just has the 320 megahertz channel uh, bandwidth width instead of the 160. And once again, that's only gonna be on the higher spec boards as well. But um, that's most of it on the board. A little bit rushed there, but there are some other things I do wanna cover that came in the media kit. But overall, I do think this board does look quite similar to the uh, AMD counterpart, which I covered last week. Very heavy board. We also have your dual uh, front panel headers for your USB. So we got your Type-C and then your normal Type-A. So the 3.2, 3.2 Type-C. Now one of these is a USB 20 and one of these is 10. So if your case only has one, it's probably worthwhile plugging it into the 20 if the actual uh, case can support the uh, 20 for that. Now I just wanna put this to the side. Already covered a little bit about the memory. Unfortunately, I cannot um, give you any more information on that. Now we've got this ROG thermal paste. Not really gonna talk about anything like that. I haven't actually used that before, so I don't know how well that is going to perform. The last thing I do wanna cover is this new Ryzen 3 Extreme. Let's see if we can get this in the shot a little bit easier. It might be hard. Now, there's not a whole lot different going on with this uh, with this unit. I've got some notes down here. So this is running the Acer Tech Emma G8 V2 pump. Now, in terms of that, that's gonna have higher flow rates and lower impedance. And we also get thicker bands than on the standard, uh, standard Ryzen 3. I'll just move this forward a little bit. Kind of awkward to show that so these are the fans here let me just check i believe when they say thicker they're probably going to be 30 yeah 30 mil thick for the fans now i don't know your thoughts on this but i really wish rog would release these fans separately rather than just being on their all-in-one cooler because i think these fans are really well made they connect together there's uh, daisy chainable and i don't know there's just something about them the quality feels nice but you can only get them on their uh all-in-one coolers. There is a third one over here, which I haven't opened yet. So it is a standard 360. And then for the thickness of the radiator, let's just check that. That is 30 as well. So you got 30 and 30, so 60 millimeters thick all up for that. The screen is the same 3.5 inch LCD. I believe the resolution is now 640 by 480 instead of 240. And it's now 60 hertz screen instead of 30. Uh, which is on the non-extreme. So of course you can put custom animated GIFs, live monitoring, clock frequency, temperatures, uh, fan speed, and your coolant flow as well. So you can do all that. But for me, all-in-one coolers, I'll probably give this a, a test, but you know me, I do love my custom loot. So of course I will be doing a, uh, I'll be trying to do a launch build on this uh, platform with this hero. Now that I've got everything, because I believe today is the 11th or 12th, um, I did get this kit a little bit later. I uh, arrived about a day and a half later, so you probably noticed that there's quite a few videos already on this kit already, but it's currently just gone six in the morning, and I tried to smash this out to get this out as soon as I can. But yeah, definitely try to get a launch build. It just depends on when a CPU does arrive. I've got a sick case that I can build this in. So yeah, we will go from there. But anyway, I wanna thank ROG for sending this out. Sending this awesome kit out. Uh, it's always fantastic to be included in these launches. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one.